Hear the words of the Collect for the 13th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty and merciful God, of whose only gift it cometh that, all, that thy faithful people do unto thee true and laudable service, grant, we beseech thee, that we may so faithfully serve thee in this life, that we fail not finally to attain thine heavenly promises. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. We pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The collect for today contains a prayer for the faithful people of God to do God true and laudable service. What is it then that God wants from his people? The prayer at least seems easy enough for, understand, for us to understand, but do we understand it and apply it to our daily lives? So let's think about this and see if it is so. The gospel lesson for today from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Luke gives us a definition of how to serve God along with an example of how this is supposed to work in real life. The definition is given in Luke 10.27 and is a summation of the law of Moses as the lawyer understood it. And he said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. Now the church has, uh, has incorporated the version of this remark given in Mark 12, 30 and 31 and that we had just recited and used in every celebration of the Eucharist because it is so important to our spiritual lives. It is rightly called the summary of the law for that is what it truly is. A one line explanation of what God expects from us as true and laudable service. This explanation is then followed by a concrete example of the Good Samaritan and shows us what this service is supposed to look like in real life. Unfortunately, because Jesus knows how mankind just loves to twist things to fit their own desires. So he gives us this example. He explains to us that it does not matter what one's worldly position is in the example of the Levite or what one's religious position is with the example of the priest, or even that one is despised as the Samaritan was by the Jews. We are called to give true service to God by showing mercy in this world, not based on tribe or religion or anything else in this life, but on the image and likeness of God that all mankind possesses. This is what God wants us to do in his service. So why then didn't the Levite help the person in distress? They did not do so because they were relying on the law of Moses, or at least their interpretation of the law of Moses. And the same thing happened with the priest. Each in his own way was saying, I don't know this person. So I don't have to help them. In other words, they took a very, very narrow definition of the word neighbor of saying someone that lives close to you and that you're familiar with as the person that you should help. But that guy's a stranger. I don't know him. I ain't going to help him. Bye. Have a nice life or death, as the case may be. And of course, the difficulty with, with this was that they were relying on their interpretation of what the law of Moses said rather than on what God said it meant. And this brings us to the epistle lesson for today. And Paul, in the third chapter of his epistle to the Galatians, presents an understanding of the law that is contrary to the understanding of the Levite and the priest in this parable. And also, by the way, of any person that believes that law is the answer to all the questions of life. Paul begins by pointing out that the law of Moses was given 430 years after God had directly given the promises of the kingdom and the Redeemer to Abraham. He received those promises in faith, knowing that God to, could do anything that he said he would do. The law did not and could not make null and void the promises of God. It could not change one jot or one tittle of this covenant in any way. 
the descendants of Abraham would receive the Redeemer and the kingdom of God with or without the law being given to them. Well, if this was so, why then did God give the law unto man? Well, it's given because mankind basically said to God, you're, you're, you, don't, you haven't really defined what you want us to do. So, so we need some more definitions so that we can avoid sin. So God said, fine. Here's the Ten Commandments. I'm going to lay it out to you. Ten really simple things and then all of the tenets that follow from those laws. Here's the law, which is what Moses did. So, what did man say? Oh, good. There it is. We can do that like walking on a log. No problem at all. Of course, what did man do? He fell off the log and sinned again and again. And again, well, I could go on, but let's just say ad nauseum, and still does to this day. The difference this time with the law was that once the law was given, man had nothing to hide behind. It was plain. This is what you should do. There were no more excuses possible. Man could be convicted of sin in any number of ways. And this is the point that Paul is making when he writes in Galatians 3, 10, and 11. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. For the just shall live by faith. The law could not and did not give righteousness to mankind. Because if it could have, then there would have been no reason for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to come and die on the cross. We could have done it if the law could have given us righteousness and holiness and perfection. But of course, we can't. Man couldn't do it. We can't do it. Paul tells us that all mankind has sinned. And since if we break one tiny little piece of the law... We are guilty of the entire law. That means that each and every person that has ever lived, except one notable exception, of course, would be convicted and sent to hell under the law, including all of us. This is why our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ had to come to earth to become a man. He had to fulfill the promises of God in the only way that would be acceptable to the holiness and justice of God. Mankind had to be clean from the stain that he bore so that the curse of sin was borne by the sinless one who hung on a tree. Jesus assumed the penalty that our sins demanded. And through his sacrifice, we have the promise of Abraham fulfilled. Our faith is the way that we enter into the kingdom of God and it is the way that we are wiped clean by the sacrifice of our Redeemer. It is in faith and through faith that we are forgiven. No other way. So let us walk in that faith and have the promises of God fulfilled in ourselves through our faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And let us seek to do in our lives as the parable of the Good Samaritan teaches us that we may so faithfully serve him in this life that we fail not finally to attain his heavenly promises. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.